even being forced to check the box of what identity you are, whether that's because you are applying for a job or you're taking the SAT or ACT and you have to choose a category. Just like at at all these checkpoints in life, you're asked to identify yourself on forms. And even that experience is part of the socialization of, of race. And I think I remember you saying that you don't check black on those forms. What, what, yeah. What do you check? Um, well now I decline to answer if I can, I never used to do that. Now I just like decline, but sometimes it's mandatory with a lot of the government forms. And I only recently found out, which makes me very sad that a lot of times, um, people who look at your application, they're required to put it down. Even if you don't, they're required to identify you, which I, which I think is like awful because I don't want to, like if they see you or if they know you, cause I don't want to participate in that, but I'm forced to, like, I really don't like that. Mm. Um, but I used to put, and I do if I have to, other uh, Caribbean or other West Indian. So that's what I did upon arrival, fresh off the boat, not actually, into the United States. I would, because like without understanding any of the, you know, cultural, racial, whatever, um, I didn't naturally identify as Black. I was never taught to. I was, so I put other, I was, you know, more taught to identify as Caribbean or West Indian. So that's what I would do. And that's what I still do, but usually I just try to decline now. Yeah. Yeah, and this gets into the topic of affirmative action as well. I know, you know, growing up here, I was I was keenly aware as a as a teen that every time I checked the black box on a form where I was applying to something, say a college, that that was boosting the attractiveness of my resume in the eyes of whoever is judging me. Certainly when I was applying to college, I was applying to um, elite universities, Columbia, you know, places where I, I knew the moment I checked that black box, I was giving myself an advantage relative to if I hadn't tra- checked any box or if I had checked the white or the Asian box. Um, and it was not, you know, it didn't strike me as a great injustice at the time to say my Asian friend who was also applying to all the same colleges. But in retrospect, it really doesn't seem like the advantage that say I had over him was somehow correcting for historical injustices. Right. It just seemed to me like, frankly, it seemed to me like I, in, in that moment, I was lucky to be black. Right. Which is not to say there isn't another moment where I would have been lucky to be white. Certainly, th- this is the thing about America is that it's so large and there are so many different places, so many different subcultures that there are places where it's just objectively. Or, or it's obvious to everyone that being black in this location at this time, at this place, in this specific context is a disadvantage for me. People are judging me uh, based on the color of my skin. And yet there are other instances where it's obvious to everyone that being black is an advantage, such as applying to elite universities. And part of my issue with the notion of white privilege has been it flattens this whole landscape of advantage and disadvantage and simply says being you know white privilege is like a gas that fills up the container of the country such that no part of the country is immune to to white privilege there's no context in which you know, it would, it would be more advantageous to be say black or, or Asian. And to me that, you know, the, the country is so much more complicated than that. Uh, to reduce it to that is to miss just like so much of, of what's going on in social interactions and in different parts of the country. And it doesn't mean you're denying that racism is a real thing. It just means you're trying to acknowledge 
the full story of, of racial advantages and disadvantages. Um, so what, what do you think of the notion of white privilege? Yeah, oh, well, I think it's a farce, kind of for the reasons you just explained. And I think it, um, these, I, these theories people have, like if there's so many different social theories out there and a lot of them do this and this is what, I think the concept of white privilege comes from critical race theory, but I don't know what the like, academic term for whatever the all encompassing theory is that that term comes from, um, like in the, the literature. But um, a lot of social theories try to make these absolute claims about the nature of reality. And like, I don't know what can really do that. Like there's not much that can do that. And I also think that's what makes it so that you can classify them as religion or dogma. They're, they're trying to push every single thing into like their frame um, of the world. And it's just obviously not true. <laughs> like, like for what the reasons you're saying. Um, and just think of it like that. They're trying to make these absolute claims that apply in their, all situations, all interactions between people. And that's just not true. That's, that's just not true. The other thing about it is, you know, how many different kinds of privilege there are in life, right? There's, there's really too many to name, but, you know, there's growing up in a home that is safe, you know, safe from crime, for instance. It's growing up in a home with two parents rather than one. Um, there's there's genetic luck, right? Like, are you born with genes that lead you to be more likely to have certain personality traits or personality disorders? Uh, are you born with, you know, a, a symmetrical face that people find to be beautiful? Or, you know, are, are you born with just, you know, horrible skin that, that people find to, to be ugly? Um, these are all, all things that are you know, uncomfortable to talk about, but that we know influence how you're treated by the world. Like there, there's just too much proof at this point from psychology that people do get treated differently based on these totally arbitrary, unchosen characteristics, how tall you are, um, you know, how, how, how deep your voice is, um, and probably, you know, a, a million other micro characteristics that people haven't even thought to measure, right? Um, and any one of these could be made into a meme like white privilege. You know, we, we could be talking about tall privilege. We could be talking about, um, you know, we could beauty privilege. And, and the, the, other, the other thing is that even any of those traits have both pros and cons, right? Yeah. I think it would be, it, it would even be too simple to, it would be too simple to just have a, a, a meme for every kind of obvious privilege, like, you know, height and beauty and whatever, because those things themselves, I think come with, come with downsides that are, that are sometimes not, not obvious or situations in which, you know, they, they tend not to be an advantage and to have the full conversation about privilege, I think is is totally a noble goal, right? Like that, that's what, that's a lot of what political thinking should be about is how can we maximize opportunity for people and make the world a fairer place so that the arbitrary characteristics you're born with, um, so, so that we can somehow use culture and policy to cancel out the huge disparities of luck that certain, certain pe people are, certain people are born with. But, you know, the fact that we have this singular focus on race uh, and on, on white privilege, it, what it proves to me is that a lot of people are not interested in, in fairness across the board, but in using one of the thousand areas in which you could care about fairness as a, as a sort of rhetorical weapon to dominate people in arguments. Um, and, 
you know, it, it just strikes me as, as, as very divisive. Um, and you're not really allowed to take people's resentment of this notion seriously. Like one is supposed to roll one's eyes at the white guy who hates hearing about white privilege and sort of not listen to anything he has to say. And I can't, I can't really find, you know, I think frankly, if I were white, I think I would, I, I might have strong feelings about that because you don't know me. I think that's the, that's the, uh, that's the feeling a lot of people have is you have no idea what I've been through in my life. And for you to, on the color of my skin, sort of assume for, for all I know, you know, I, I was born, uh, for, for all, for all, you know, I'm an orphan, right. And I've, I've, I grew up in an orphanage and had to struggle in all of these various ways, but you're not interested in any of that. You're just interested in the fact that I'm white. And so you think, you know, something about how I grew up and what level of privilege I grew up with. And so you're going to throw that at me without being interested in any of the other ways in which um, I, I might have been, I might have gotten the short end of a, of a stick that we should care about in society. I think that's what a lot of people resent about it. And I think I, I would resent that too um, if I were white. <laughs>